Hello and welcome to Talking About. My name is John Griffith and I am here on location today at Long Island MacArthur Airport and the good people of Mid Island Air and New York Jet have agreed to give us a sort of a flight flying 101 and my guest is Luan Cuso, owner. Owner is that the prop owner of, of Mid Island Air. Welcome. Nice to be here. Okay, um, just a little bit of history on the company in general from what our preliminary conversations you said it's been a long time family business yes uh, my father was a flight instructor during the war and he taught British cadets in Clewiston Florida Lake Okeechobee to fly and after the war he came to New York and started his own airport in Deer Park in 1946 started his own airport yes my grandfather had uh, 50 acres of land in Deer Park and uh, gave that to my parents as a wedding present and started a little airport uh, with Piper Cubs in 1946 in a flight school, Mid Island Flying School, and that's uh, that was our beginnings. Okay, and that's that's wow. I mean, that's that's just the the simplest way to boil it down. You know, wow. Right, and then of course from there we went on to teach people to fly under the. Um, veterans program and we've been teaching people ever since for 60 years we've taught over 6,000 people to fly and we still uh, run a very large flight school with 25 planes and 12 instructors and we also have a uh, corporate aviation with uh, jet hangars and jet fuel sales and but our roots are still in the flight school Mid Island Flying School teaching people how to fly okay and what can somebody expect when when they come to the school and decide that they want to learn how to fly, or do people come initially knowing 100% for sure that they do want to learn how to fly? Okay. Most of our business is uh, word of mouth referral, because flying is something that people are, are timid about, and they need a little encouragement. And uh, our main uh, promotional is, is Christmas time and graduation time Father's Day we have a dads and grads campaign where we bring people in and then a Christmas promotion where we bring people in to try and uh, ha get gift certificates on learning how to fly and they'll come in the door and they'll want to know you know what is it going to be what it, what's it going to take and um, we tell them it, it takes about uh, a year and about ten thousand dollars to become a pilot okay. flying flying once a week and you'll fly, we fly in Cessnas. We have a, a fleet of Cessna aircraft, and uh, that's what people will learn in. And they'll start one-on-one -on -one with their instructor, and they'll learn the rudiments of flying, straight and level, turns, climbs, glides. Eventually, they will uh, solo a plane, take it up by themselves for the first time after about 20 hours of instruction. Then they will go on supervised cross-country flights and learn about navigation, which is a wonderful time to okay. be in aviation right now. <laughs> because of the global p positioning system, GPS. Okay, so it's it's very take... easy because you see yourself on the map as you fly around and the database is, is, is huge. For example, there are 12,700 airports in the United States okay. and the airlines only use 400 of them. So those other, the whole 12,700 are accessible by little airplanes. And, okay. Uh, so so e every community has a small airport five minutes away. You know. Okay, and most people don't even know what's in their own backyard. Right, there's little airports that's everywhere, and of course flying little planes, you can go right to the destination. And for example, to go to Martha's Vineyard, it's about an hour's flight, and of course if you try to get there on Long, Island, Long Island, it's an all-day affair getting uh, from Long Island to Martha's Vineyard, but it's a simple hour flight and a very easy flight uh, in an airplane. So. Okay, um, so just steering things sort of back to basics um okay you mentioned the the promotional times just um going through the process just slowing it down and breaking it down a little bit what would the average person expect i i mean i know you have sort of an initial kind of trial thing that goes on that many flight schools have you know just to get your feet wet and see if you want Right. You can go just lesson by lesson, about $120 a lesson, and just take four or five lessons and see 
you know, if it's for you, how do you like it? Some people will just commit a couple of thousand dollars just to get to the point where they can solo and fly a plane by themselves and learn that degree of competency. Other people... Uh, this is more of a personal achievement than... Yeah, will want to go on and, and become a pilot and go through the navigation. And you don't need more than ninth grade math skills to, to become a pilot. There's no advanced math. It's just basic math to uh, get through what you need to know to, to become a pilot. You just need a little bit of desire to want to do it. Okay. Um, well, what is the age range of some of the people who take lessons? We're most excited about starting a 12-year-old before they get to handle an automobile. If okay. they can get involved with flight lessons and learn the respect for airplanes and engines and all the disciplines that come with flying, we see they become much better drivers, more responsible uh, once they've been introduced to uh, the serious business of, of learning to fly. So that's probably our most exciting student is the 12 year old to get them before they start driving okay. and they can fly a plane by themselves on their 16th birthday that's the the minimum age to go so up by well. yourself and then we've had students in their 80s learning how to fly uh, so there really is as long as you're in reasonably good health there is no limitation as to to how long you can do this and we have customers that still fly that are 90 years old that are still flying planes today, uh, although they, they pick their weather and their days, and usually they'll maybe take somebody with them once they get to be that old. They, they won't fly too much alone anymore, but they're still flying into their 90s. Okay, um, and do people generally, in addition to their curiosity and the desire to learn, uh, do people have general safety concerns as well as far as... Sure. It, it, uh, Flying little planes is, is, uh, can be dangerous if you don't follow the rules. Uh, just like skiing on an advanced trail or an icy day can be life-threatening. Flying when the weather is bad or the winds are high or you don't feel right can be a life-threatening experience. So you have to have a discipline and follow certain uh, precautions. One of the things that uh, I have done that I'm proud of is I wrote a small book on uh, flying safety, the, the personal limitations checklist, expert thinking, think like a pro, expert decision making, think like a pro. And um, in that little booklet, I put uh, 24 limitations that the new pilot must follow, and he develops it with his instructor, puts limitations on how much wind they'll fly in, temperature dew point spreads like the incident that happened with uh, JFK Jr. If they were following my discipline and, and, and adhering to certain temperature dew point spreads and night flying limitations as in our little booklet, the new pilot would have known that that was not a safe night to, to be flying. And we developed these 24 points of, of checklist of various things you want to dis decide on before you go flying. And then there's corresponding stories that make people remember the principles and then as they gain experience they can be a little more liberal in, in their guidelines as to how much wind they could fly and what length of runway what width of runway nighttime limitations uh, right. temperature dew point spreads all, you know, all yeah. these various guidance and uh, so Roll, we have walk, run. yeah we have that in our school this personal limitations checklist concept that I think were unique in, 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 uh, in, in having that as one of our safety features of learning to fly here at Mid Island Flying School. Okay, and um, what, what keeps running the school exciting for you? Well, the fact that I've developed something that can make a difference in the safety of small plane flying is very exciting for me. And to, to see how the impact of my personal limitations checklist works on our business for, for years to come is exciting. And uh, I, I wrote the book in 1996, and, and we have not, knock on wood, have had anybody uh, get seriously hurt since I've written the book, and we've been using these principles in the business. So that's pretty exciting for me. The other thing that's exciting for me is I just had two uh, grandchildren, uh, Jared and Jaden uh, Giacino. I, daughter's active in the business, my son, my sister's general manager, and now I see the fourth generation uh, coming along that'll be uh, helping to uh, teach people to fly and oversee the flying uh, <laughs> way into the distant future. So, so basically the whole family has wings. Yeah, we're looking for a hundred years of uh, Mancusos uh, in, in flying and teaching people how to fly on Long Island. So. Okay, and um, 
is there such a thing as a typical student? And you, you mentioned the age range, you mentioned some of the diversity, um, but it, is, is there a, no, a I, common I, factor? No, I wouldn't say uh, there is a typical student. We, have, uh, we probably have more women learning to fly now than we've had in the past, but we have young people, older people, business people, uh, just uh, uh, school teachers, uh, <laughs> Suffolk County Health Department employees, police, all, all walks of life uh, uh, learn to fly. Okay, well you, you mentioned an in, uh, influx of women. What do you think it is that's beginning to attract more women into flying? Just that they've become uh, bolder, more, more assertive, <laughs> uh, wanting to enjoy the, the, the excitement of life that men have uh, enjoyed for many years. They, they want a piece of that excitement. Uh, learning to fly a small plane, you, you're in the 1% of the population. Only about 1% of the population uh, will learn to fly a, a small plane. And it makes you feel tremendously special. When you, when you master the art of flying a small plane, it gives you a feeling of self-worth and self-confidence that's just enormous. You, you feel terrific about yourself when you uh, learn how to fly a small plane. Okay. Um, well, you, you mentioned it being a sense of accomplishment and very much a confidence builder along the way. Um, in addition to that, what can somebody come out of? Just uh, even just by taking one or two lessons, what what can somebody find within themselves that they might not have known was there? Well, go southwest. <laughs> we. Uh, offer something known as a pinch hitter course, which is uh, uh, six or seven lessons, just enough to learn some of the basic skills of flying, how to tune a radio, how to work the uh, emergency frequency, how to call for help in the event you were flying as a passenger in a small plane with somebody and something happened to the pilot. You would know enough how to communicate how to navigate with the GPS, which is pretty simple. And we teach you just enough so you would learn how to land, or at least with somebody talking to you on the radio and guiding you through, be able to get the plane down safely. Um, and that's uh, something that anybody who flies uh, regularly in a small plane as a passenger would behoove them to take a pinch hit, of course, to learn just enough so they could get a plane down safely in the event they had to with somebody talking them through it. Okay, so some good basic emergency skills. Right. Okay. Right. If you could describe the feeling of flying, um, yeah, I don't know how, how many words it, it would take, but if you could just sort of give Give the viewing audience just sure. an expression sure. of that I, I would say zippity doo da. <laughs> when I was uh, 16 on my 16th birthday, which is uh, about 42 years ago, I sold an airplane for my first time. And I immediately burst out into song singing zippity doo da. <laughs> and, and I just felt I'm like a million bucks. And it was such a wonderful, liberating feeling of freedom and confidence to take the plane up after getting at that time maybe I had uh, 15, 16 lessons and to take a plane up by myself for the first time it just uh, made me feel wonderful and I remember what I was singing to this day <laughs> uh, 42 years later. So basically it's just even just that you know, the one accomplishment it's an experience that you can, you can carry with you yes, throughout your life. It's a once in a lifetime experience you never forget a rush of exhilaration and adrenaline that's just uh, pretty special. Okay. And you had spoken a little bit about, let's say, a one year time frame from, what was that, from first right. lesson to solo? If you or took, no, that's to complete to get your license. Okay. It, if you took, say, two lessons a week, then you could become a pilot in about six months. Okay. It's a matter of hours. Uh, the, the law requires you put in 40 hours to get a pilot's license. The average person takes more like 60 or 70. We don't rush it in our school. We figure it's more important to feel very confident when you right. get your license rather than get your license in the minimum number of hours. Uh, you want to do it right, not do it fast. Yes, we want to do it right and thorough. And we, we generally take a little longer probably than some of the other schools to complete our students. But when they're done, they feel confident to fly to Block Island and Martha's Vineyard and up to uh, Connecticut and down to Atlantic <laughs> City and whatever, uh, Pennsylvania to 
go visit some friends or whatever. When they're done, they feel pretty confident in going flying and taking little trips. Okay, and you had given yeah, sort of a basic overview of what training would cost. Um, is the average student on the more affluent side, or is it uh, is it really affordable to the general public if they want to take a slower pace, if they can if they can swing that? Well, um, again, if you put if aside twenty five hundred dollars, you probably could get to the point where you learn how to fly in solo a plane, and okay. they would probably be the best twenty five hundred dollars you ever spent. And as far as uh, finding at that point, was it worth the sa personal sacrifice to have that part-time job or whatever that you needed to give you that extra $120 a week to be able to go on and get your license? Uh, you could decide at that point. Uh, is it expensive to some people when they find out? They say, wow, that's, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000, that's a lot of money to get a license. Then you have other people who say, geez, that's less than my annual dues at my country club. So it, it's right. all a matter of relative terms. Uh, you know, we have but people it is that buy that. Reach. Yeah, people spend that much on a TV nowadays. So uh, this is true. You know, is it uh, plasma TV or learn to fly? I mean, you know, uh, seems like an easy decision to me. But uh, <laughs> that's because uh, I love to fly. Right, and um, to somebody who is just curious, watching the show, and they've become a little bit curious about learning to fly, whether it be through Mid-Island Air or through another school, right. where could people find the tools to, to learn more about it? Uh, you probably can go on the internet and look up the different schools on Long Island, midislandair.com. We have another website, uh, newyorkjet, nyjet.com. They link to each other. Okay. And, uh, of course, we're in the yellow pages, and, uh, you know, Okay, and there'll be a link on the Talking About That Info website, okay. this way, you know, which is up on your screen right now. So you can just sort of go to the internet, you know, look through my site first and then just kind of click over for more information because I want you to see both. Okay. Yeah. And um, from what I understand that you've, you've made some arrangements for me to get a sample flying lesson today? Yes, you bet. We'll uh, look forward to uh, getting your adrenaline going <laughs> and getting you up in the air. Okay, well, I do want to thank you for joining me today been my pleasure. Okay, and I do want to thank you for watching, and I'm going to go get myself ready for that lesson. I'm here with now Charles Brabant, um, who is a flight instructor here. Welcome. Um, you're going to be talking us through a sample lesson today? Yes, I will. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of hand the mic over to you and just uh, take it away. Okay. Well, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking off from Isla Airport, Long Island MacArthur right here. It's in the center of Long Island. And you can see this is our chart, our aviation charts for the whole northeast area. What we're going to do is we're going to take off out of here, off in this direction, heading eastbound. And then we're going to come back up and head over to the north shore over here, right by Northport and Port Jefferson. And we're going to do some uh, upper aerial work, just learning how the plane flies straight and level. Some simple turns, descents, climbs, and your normal takeoff and landing. This is our, our weather room. And this is where we check out the weather for the, the whole area that we're going to be flying. Um, the screen that I have up here is your current surface analysis. It shows you the whole United States, and it shows you where all your lines of pressure are, your high pressures and your low pressures. You can see Long Island is this little dot over here right now, and it's pretty cloudy out. So we're going to stay low, and we're going to be going through it. A couple of neat little features is we can zoom in and just see the rainfall that are com coming down over here. And these are all the storms that are going to be moving through the area probably later this evening. Um. All right. Ready to go? And all the way over to start and slowly start advancing this mixture. Okay. Pull that window shut here, just pull it on that handle and go ahead and close it over. Now pull mine shut, this way we quiet us down a little bit. Okay, we'll turn on the rest of our radios and GPS systems. Okay, so now that we're here, we contact the tower and tell them we're ready to take off. The tower's on 19.3 on comm number one, so we'll just switch this over to comm number one. And we'll give them a call. Long Island Towers, uh, Skyhawk 2119 Echo is ready for takeoff in sequence. Kaler, it's Kaler 266 from my 6 length position, hold. All right, 6 position, hold, Kaler 266. That's a 19 Echo, hold short, number 2 for departure. 19 Echo is holding short. Now we're going to be the next, we're number one for takeoff now. So we're going to prepare for the takeoff, we're going to turn our strobe lights on, we're landing right on, 
and a transponder to out, so this way they can see what altitude we're at and where exactly we are. One on Echo, runway 6 to 1, position hold, be ready. One on Echo's position hold, ready to go. Runway 266, departure, 12005, 2005, adios. Okay, so one niner echo wind one eight zero at eight east caution wake your preceding regional jet departure seven thirty seven turning at three mile right base runway six cliff takeoff. One nine echo is going on the roll. One two golf, you be number two, you're following seven thirty seven on a three mile right base runway six number okay, two. So now we're on the roll here where airspeed one, two, is alive. And all of our engine gauges are showing in the green. At fifty five knots we start a rotation. At fifty five knots we rotate. 67 Foxtrot, traffic 12 o'clock and 2 miles westbound, 1,100 feet. Uh, we're looking, 67 Fox. And Long Island Tower, 19 Echo, left uh, side step. 19 Echo, 30 degrees to the left is approved. 30 degrees left, 19 Echo. 67 Foxtrot, head traffic. 67 Foxtrot, thank you. Okay, so now we're on the takeoff climb here. And what we did was I just turned so 30 one degrees to the left. Contact departure now, new frequency, 118.0, 18 nothing, advise them of the heading, have a safe day. One on echo over to 18 nothing. And two golf out to 737 in sight. Uh, Roger, have traffic in sight. U67 Fox, Roger. 100.3, have a good day. 93, so long, 430. And New York departure, 2119 echoes with you, heading 030, climbing through 600. Test 211 on our Echo New York departure radar contact. Climb and maintain 2000 on Class Charlie airspace. 19 Echo up to 2000 in Class Charlie. Test 1 off Foxtrot, turn right, heading 330. Okay, so now, like I was saying, we're climbing out. I asked them for a 30 degree turn. Just so we avoid the uh, turbulence shot. caused by the departing jet in front of us. And as we climb out here, we yeah, just keep the one hand on the throttle, right, making sure that stays up. Contact New York departure, then we climb out on our heading of 030. You can see right off to our left hand side there is Lake Ronkonkoma. Yeah, you can see here now that we're climbing through 1,700. One heading 360. One nine echo 360. Okay, so he just gave us a turn to 360, and you can see we're climbing up to through 1,800 feet, and we're going to level off at exactly 2,000 feet, which is what he asked us to stop our climb at, and we roll out on north. Okay, there's 2,000 feet, so we lower that nose, bring back some power there. Okay, now we come and we track right up to the north practice area like we had spoken about on the ground. Test one on our echo, three miles northeast of the Isaac Airport, resume on navigation. On nav, one on echo. So one how about you take over this flying thing and, uh, and I just sit back and relax. <laughs> Okay, so where are we okay. going? Okay, so as you can see, it is a little bit bumpy up here like we had spoken about. Right. Two miles west so what we're going to do is we're going to go out over the water, it should calm down a little bit. So what you're going to do is, you can see straight ahead here, if you hold this dashboard about three fingers up to the horizon here, you see how the horizon is off in the distance, three fingers to the horizon there will keep you exactly level at this altitude. So just go ahead and hold that horizon right where it is. Go ahead, you have the controls. There you go, you're flying. <laughs> That's one out, Fox Shot Traffic, no factor contact, long out. And just keep heading straight for that trail line there. Just keep okay. the nose pointing right over that direction. Well, and I point three, and we have that traffic in sight, so one out, Fox Shot. Pretty good, you're a pro. <laughs> so relax, put one hand on the yoke, just put your left hand on the yoke, you can relax, relax your right hand. And relax, put it right on your knee there. Okay. And, and just relax that, that other hand just a little bit. Nice and easy. Okay. The smaller movements you make, the less problems you'll have with the over-controlling the airplane. Well, it's a matter of uh, just personally you know, not Getting clutching for dear life. Exactly. You don't want to do this like in the car. You ever see a new driver that holds on real tight and they get the white knuckles, they call it? Yeah. Yeah, well, we don't want to do that. Nice and easy. See, I'm just two fingers on the yoke and just nice and calm. All right, so let's make a turn. We're going to head right for those north port stacks over there. So all you want to do in the turn is just take the turn plane and bank it with the yoke there and just bring the horizon so that it looks just like that. And just hold that horizon right where it is and you'll hold your level turn.
Just like that. Now just hold that. You see where the horizon cuts right through the dashboard? Right. Just hold it right there and you'll hold this nice level turn all the way around. A little bit more back pressure in there. There you go, right there. There you go. And now you can see how the ailerons went neutral, right? Once you set that bank, the plane just wants to stay in that turn. So in order to stop the turn, you got to put opposite pressure on there. Okay. And you see how to roll right back to wings level. And a little bit more. Good. Now lower that nose just a little, push down. So you bring that horizon right back to that same location, three fingers. And it went out to Jurat, it's still going to be the same all the time. Fly heading 240, vector sequence to runway 6. So do you have any questions while we're up here flying around? Um, well, I mean, I'm coming at this from a you know, really somewhat ignorant standpoint. I mean, I'm enjoying the feeling. I mean, it, it, there's an incredible feeling of, yeah, there's an incredible feeling of power associated with this. And it's really, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot to take in. And yeah, it's very, it, it's very exciting scary and yeah, so you know, it's a good adrenaline yeah, rush, yeah. right? All right, so what do you say you bring it down and land us? In? <laughs> this is 4 for Golf Wind 200 okay, you have the control again? Runway 24 intersection, clear for takeoff. Okay, so now we're pretty much lined up straight in for that runway straight ahead there. Okay, there we go, as we slow down. Yeah, we see we're in that side of that white arc, so we're going to put our second notch of flaps in. And our last notch of flaps comes in. And you can feel all that drag out there now, right? Yes. <laughs> Slowing us down. And you'll see we're going to descend right back into that glide slope. And it's going to turn right over white. See how it's turning right over white again? Yes. Now we're right on that three degree glide slope again, so we're just going to hold it right on that glide slope, bring it all the way down to the runway. See, red over white, red over white. Now it's going to turn right over red because we know we're landing. And just as it disappears out of our sight, just hold this straight down the runway here. And we're just going to keep pitching up, pitching up, holding it right here, holding it, hold it. Okay. Main gear touches down, and then the nose gear comes down, and we just apply light brakes. And we'll come to a stop. And they're going to tell us to turn off. Echo, where you parking? One nine echo is going to Mid Island. One nine echo, you can taxi down, exit at Alpha One, and taxi to Mid Island with me. One on echo, let's go clear on Alpha One. Okay, so she just said we can take the roll all the way down to the other end of the runway. Right back to where we started. This was a great teaser. And, you know, as I said earlier, you know, I would be very much interested in, you know, learning a lot more. And I'm sure there's a hell of a lot more to learn. Yeah, definitely there's a lot more to learn. This is just an introduction to the just the air, general area and how the airplane reacts in the air. Okay, and... Um, do the majority of the students that you come that come here for the introductory flight do they come back for a second? I'd say about 90% of the students that come in come back for uh, another flight at least and then usually continue their training. Charles, I want to thank you very much. And I'm John Griffith. That website again is www.talkingabout.info and I will see you next time. Bye.